God, I resist the devil and he have to flee in the name of Jesus. Right, amen. I thank God for Pastor James, amen, for allowing me the opportunity to share the word of God with you all tonight. And I know that you all are truly going to be blessed, amen. You know, we've been talking about uh, preparing the temple. And we've been talking about preparing this temple. And we've been talking about preparing our temple. Um, and so tonight, you know, as we go, uh, you know, we've been talking about how, you know, we're going to prepare this temple where when people come in that their lives can be changed. And so we've been talking about how, you know, that this house shall be called a house of prayer and that it should be uh, saturated for the, with the glory of God so when people come in, they can leave with joy. And so on um, Sunday, we talked about how the word of God say, if my people which are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. And so we were talking about, you know, turning from our wicked ways and that God was going to uh, for, uh, forgive us and he was going to heal our land. And so on yesterday morning, I woke up and I didn't have anything in particular on my heart, but I began to pray in the Holy Ghost. And when I started praying in the Holy Ghost, I heard the spirit of the Lord say that I want to deliver my people from unforgiveness. I want to, you know, we, God told us, he said, we are about to flourish like never before because we are being put in order. We are about to flourish like never before because we are being put in order. And I, I wrote down <laughs> on my paper tonight while I was meditating on that, and uh, don't think what God is doing now in our lives is going to happen without opposition. Don't think what God is doing now in our lives is going to happen without opposition. So we will have to war more. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want to prepare you now because, like I say, it ain't no time to take a break. It's no time to falter under pressure. It's time for us to win every battle. And so God said, we're about to flourish like never before. And he gave me the scriptures to go with it, which is Psalm 92, 13 and 14. It says, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. So in other words, you know how the word of God say that even though the outward man are perishing, but the inner man is renewed day by day. So even though my age may be changing every year, but my insides are more vibrant than ever, ever before. You know, I may not be able to turn, turn the flip in the natural, but in the spirit realm, I'm turning the flip. Why? Because I'm renewing my, my spirit man every day. Amen. And so that's what God wants us to be doing is renewing our spirit man. And so in Isaiah chapter 50, 55, I'm going to read this to you. You don't have to turn there. It says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked, uh, here we go with that word again. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And then he goes on to say, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so as I was meditating on that, I was thinking about how, you know, God said we have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. How many of you know in order to have the mind of Christ, you know, you got to continually renew your mind to the word of God. 
And you got to continually be listening to the voice of God. You got to have God speaking in your ears to have the thoughts of God. Amen. Or otherwise, you whoever's speaking in your ears, those that's what you're hearing, and that's what you're going to imitate. And so you have to be very careful during this season who are speaking in your ears. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, uh, I want you to turn now in your Bibles. If you've been in the faith like we have, been in the faith move for any length of time, you know Mark eleven twenty three. I want you to turn to Mark eleven twenty three. You know, we got this down, Pat, Mark eleven twenty three. But I want you to turn there tonight because that's where we're going to get started at tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Mark 11, in verse 23, we're going to read through 26, and it says, Mark 11, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. And so it says in Mark 11, in verse 22, and God answered, saying unto them, have faith in God. And then he said, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now that sounds real good right there, on it? It said anything we say, we desire when we pray, that we can speak to the mountains and it shall remove. But then he goes on talking. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So we went on, on this trip. You know, when we got into the faith move, we went to naming and declaiming it. And so we prophesied and we did everything. And a lot of things in our lives didn't change. A lot of things that we were prophesying and believing God for didn't come to pass. But the thing I believe happened to us, we didn't go keep on reading, and we didn't take it for serious. It says, and when you stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. If you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. And so God said tonight, I want to break off some unforgiveness out of y'all lives that have been there for quite some time. He said, I'm going to show you how to forgive tonight. I'm going to show you how to pardon some people. See, because many of us, we are holding people in prison. Because that's what unforgiveness will do. It will cause you to hold on to something that God wants you to let go of. Mm -hmm. And so listen now. So listen, in, Mar in Matthew chapter 18, you know, this is where Peter came to God, Jesus, and he said, how often should uh, my brother trespass against me and I forgive him? He said, till seven times. And so from the natural standpoint, you, may think, you think that's pretty good if he says seven times. You know, I don't forgave you seven times. A lot of us can't forgive one time. But if you're talking about seven times, I think that's pretty good. But Jesus said, no, Peter, no, you don't have it right. He said, I need you to forgive seven times 70. And that's 490 times. And so listen now. The thing that we got to understand in the walk that we're talking about walking, we're going to have to learn how to be quick to forgive and to quick to let go. We can't hold on to people for 50 years. We got to learn. And the reason that we are where we are and we got so much unforgiveness in our heart is because we didn't learn how, when we came into the Word of God, we didn't learn how to immediately start letting go people. People go. We would hold on to them. And in the meantime, somebody would come along the next day and they'll do something to us. And so we got that in our hearts too. So in the meantime, now we're walking around wounded. And how many of you know when unforgiveness is in your heart, you walk around with bitterness, you walk around with all kind of stuff going on in your life? How many of you know that? And so when uh, the reason that God say that, you know, we're going to be fat and we're going to be flourishing, is going to be, you know, how, how many of you know when something is fat and flourishing, it don't matter what size it is, it matters the freedom of it. That's what it matters about. And so uh, I was sitting today and I was looking out of my bedroom window. My granddaughter came home, came to uh, live with us, and uh, she told uh, Papa that she wanted to have a garden. 
And so Big Mama, Grandma, but Big Mama, me, I had been asking for a garden for ever since we moved there. But, but I never got it. But anyway, the baby came in, and the baby said, I want a garden. And so anyway, Papa said, oh, yeah, let's, uh, I'll help you. Oh, yeah. And so anyway, the baby got a garden. Even though it's not, it's not a big garden, but it's eight, uh, I think it's eight by two. And they put, put, put this garden where, you know, they put, I told them to put it in my window, my bedroom window. I told them I was going to watch it for them. So I tell them when something try to attach itself to it because I sit and watch it look out my window all the time. And so here this garden is, they, my, they, made, they put this garden, they put uh, some uh, sakina, whatever that is, that word. And they put that in there, and they put tomatoes in there, and they put uh, bell pepper, and they put some kind of peas in there. Now, all this is in this little small place. <laughs> and so, listen, uh, they just, it's just growing so good. Why? Because Pastor went out and bought some of the best fertilizers that he could find. And so they went out there, and they fertilized this little area. And so here, uh, we, uh, Jayla got this fat and flourishing little garden. And I mean this fat and flourishing. It's because, now, it's not because it's all that big, but it's because of what they're doing to it. Come on, I need you to stay with me now. And so God's saying, now, we're going to be fat and flourishing. It's not because of what size we are. It's going to be because of what freedom he's going to release in our lives. Uh-huh. And so listen now, so like I was saying now, in our lives, we have walked around with all type of, how many of you know that most divorces happen because somebody got some unforgiveness in their heart and they could not release it, and so them and their mate, they got divorced. How many of you know that? And so then after they get divorced from this person, for years after they done got divorced from this person, another person could come along and just do just the inkling of what that person done, and they go to calling them and say, you act like so-and-so and so-and-so. You act like so-and-so and so-and-so. And that person sitting there thinking, I'm not nothing like them. I don't know them. But anyway, in their book, because they still got them on the inside of them, they haven't released them. And that's why marriages fail, because we don't forgive each other. Mm -hmm. And so listen now, so God said, I'm going to release my people from unforgiveness so they can be fat and flourishing. And so listen, the thing that I want you to realize, not one of you have a good reason to walk in unforgiveness. I want you to, I don't care what the person have done to you. When, I'm, when we get to, well, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to lay aside our feelings because feelings don't have nothing to do with it. It's the word of God. And Jesus said, when you stand praying, I'm standing here. I got unforgiveness in my heart. And so Jesus said, now, when you stand praying, if you have ought against any, you forgive. He didn't say, Celine, if you feel like it, he didn't say, uh, if it wasn't bad, they done to you, did to you. No, he didn't say any of that. He say, if you have alt in your heart and you come in, in my presence to pray, he said, you need to forgive so that if you forgive them, I'm going to forgive you. So now here we are now. We thinking God is forgiving us when all the time we're not forgiving somebody else. But he done told you now. He said, when you stand praying, if you have ought against any. He didn't say uh, ought against your daddy. He didn't say ought against your brother, your sister. No, he said any. So that include everybody. Somebody say amen. You're going to get delivered tonight because you're going to let all unforgiveness go. You're going to be fat and flourishing. And so Peter, like I said, he thought he was being cute. He said seven times seven. Jesus said no, 70 times, seven times 70. And so that means, now you think about that, seven times 70. That means a person got to do something to you a whole lot. And they got to be forever agitating the living daylights out of you. And what you got to be, a child of the almighty God, you stand under the throne of God, and you say, God, I'm going to release them, and I'm going to let them go. I'm not going to hold them. Why I'm not going to hold them, Lord? Because you said, I am not supposed to hold them. So now listen now. It says now, to whom you forgive anything, 
I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sake, forgive. And then he said, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. That's found in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. So he's telling us when we don't forgive, we are allowing Satan to get advantage of us. And so Satan is the author of unforgiveness. And so the more unforgiveness we hold in our heart, the more Satan have control of us. Have you ever been to the place where someone has done something to you and you can be walking about and you be doing real good, feeling good, and you see that person and all of a sudden you go to boiling. You get mad. Your head go to hurting. Don't you think that person is controlling you? Huh? So do you think that's God for that person to control you? Come on, talk to me. I need to know now. Do you think it's God for just to look at somebody, you get mad? Been there, done that. So listen, I'm going to help you. <laughs> I'm going to help you. God done helped me, and I'm going to help you. Glory to God. Because Satan is the author of unforgiveness. And then what on, on top of it, he will constantly remind you of what that person have done. You know, you'll be trying to forgive them. And the devil will tell you, I, I wouldn't forgive them yet. You know, they ain't suffer long enough. They need to suffer just a tad bit longer. And then the next day come up. You take it on through the next day. Then you take it on through the next day. And then you take it on for a month. And it wasn't much of nothing in the first place. Most unforgiveness is much of nothing. Where you could have released it and went on about your business. But instead, your father, the devil, <laughs> he kept reminding you of it, and you kept holding on to it. So now listen, this is what God said to me. He said, I want you to put some examples out there. He said, tell them about how Jesus, my son, how he was on the cross, and these people done done a job on him. And all of a sudden now, he finna get out of here. He said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they done. In other words, he pardoned them. Listen now. So Jesus said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. So God, Jesus said, I can't hold them in bondage because of what they're doing to me. He said, I got to release them so if the opportunity come for them, they can be saved because I came for them, even though they may be crucifying me. And so that's why it's important a lot of people you are holding in bondage is the same people you want to see saved. Mm. Mm. A lot of people want certain people saved so they can act better with them. It's not because you want that person really saved. It's about you. Your heart ain't right. And so what we're going to have to do we're talking about uh, getting God way of doing things, getting God way of thinking. And so I want everybody saved because I don't want to see nobody go to hell. I want everybody to be saved so they can go to heaven. And so what I got to do, my brother, my sister, my whoever it is that have wounded me, I want them to go to heaven. So I'm going to release them. I forgive. Father, I forgive them. Whatever they have done to me, I forgive them. And so now when I'm standing in the throne room of God, I'm standing and I'm talking to God. I'm doing this by faith because my heart is hurting. But my heart, listen to me now, my heart don't feel like doing this because my heart is hurting. They just finished hurting me. But I got to stand before God because God said I could do it. And that God have given me everything that I need in order to be able to do it. So I'm going to stand here tonight. And Lord God, I'm asking you to help me. By faith, I'm going to forgive every person that has wounded me. I'm going to forgive them. 
And so listen now. So when I finish talking to God about forgiving that person, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the word of God said in Jude, it said pray in the Holy Ghost that you build yourself up and then you'll keep yourself in the love of God. And so when the love of God overshadowed me, I can really forgive that person. All of a sudden I realize I can look at them now and I'm not mad anymore. Mm. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to help you get rid of unforgiveness. I'm going to help you get to the place where if things don't go your way, you're not going to get angry. Because something ain't going to go your way all the time. The devil going to continue to hold you in that same old place, going around that same old mountain, doing the same thing. I'm mad because I don't have my way. I'm just downright mad because and I'm an unforgiveness because I did not get my way. I could have wrote a book on unforgiveness. Because if I didn't get my way, I was going to get mad, I was going to get angry, and I was going to shut down. Don't talk to me. Don't even look at me. You just leave me alone. I'm mad. And you know the bad part about Pastor James? He wasn't even a pastor at that time. That man didn't even care. He going on about his business. He don't even know I'm mad. He just going on about his little sweet business because I guess in his mind he thinking, I don't care whether she talk or not. I don't want to talk. So it wasn't hurting him. Well, it, I, it wasn't hurting him. And so here I am now. I would get so mad and I would hold it so long. In my head, I already had migraine headaches all the time. But then when that extra, extra stuff come in, and then my head would hurt so bad. And here I am, I'm popping anisons, I'm popping uh, Tylenols. I'm just going on and on and on because I'm killing my own self. And so a lot of things that's going on in our body's body of Christ is because of unforgiveness. It's because of what we are doing to our own body rather than releasing that stuff and going on about your business. Amen. Glory to God. And so here Jesus now, he on the cross, and he say, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they've done. And so somebody said, that was Jesus. So look at Stephen, y'all. Stephen, they were stoning Stephen. And so Stephen said, you know what? I, I got to pardon these people because I want them to get saved too. So he said, Lord, don't hold it to their charge. <laughs> Glory to God. So you got to look at whatever somebody done done to you. I don't care whether they rape you. I don't care what they've done to you. You got to release them and you got to let them go. Because God said we got to forgive when we stand praying. Like I told you on Sunday, it's no sense in us doing all this praying and we don't do the word of God and get our results we want from praying. We got to obey the word of God and we got to do it at all costs. Amen. Glory to God. And so then I looked at Joseph. Look at Joseph, what Joseph's brothers did to him. And so when Joseph's uh, father died, those brothers got together. They said, oh, he going to do us in now. He going to do us in now. So daddy is gone. He going to do us in. So they come to him to apologize for the 15 time. And Joseph looked at him. He said, y'all, y'all, what y'all did, he said, well, y'all meant it for my harm, but God meant it for my good. And I tell you another time, sometimes people, what people do to you, push you closer to God. Some people you need to, you know, Pastor done said this before, you need to send them a, a, a thank you card. Because if it hadn't have been for you, I wouldn't be where I am today with God. If I hadn't went through some of the stuff people done to me, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I know I wouldn't be. But what I did, I cried out to God, God, help me. Help me to forgive them. Help me to let it go. So that made me get closer to God. And so Joseph told him, what you meant for my bad, God turned it around and worked in our good. Amen. And so some of the stuff that you are going through, you need to look at it as an opportunity to know God greater. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so God's saying to us now, he said, when you stand praying, he said, if you have ought against any, he said, I need you to forgive them. And so that means if God said to forgive them, that means we can do what? If God said we can forgive them, that means what? We can forgive them. I need you to say it out loud. I, I can forgive no matter what someone has done to me, I can forgive. And tonight, I'm going to let my husband go. I'm going to let my wife go. 
I'm going to let my best friend. I'm going to let my brother, my sister, my mama, my cousin, whoever it is. I'm going to let them go tonight. I'm going to let them go tonight. I'm going to leave out of here free. I'm going to leave out of here free tonight. Come on, I need you to say, I need you to close your eyes. And I need you to say it again. I need you to talk to God. I'm going to let every person that have hurt me. I'm going to let every person that have hurt me. I'm going to let every person that have hurt me. I'm going to let them go tonight. Come on, I need you to talk to God right now. I need you to talk to God right now. I don't care if you sitting beside your husband. I don't care if you sitting across from somebody in this church that you was holding something against or they have done something to you. You need to make up your mind right now. I'm going to let them go tonight. I'm not leaving out of this Bible study tonight with unforgiveness in my heart. I know that God wants me to walk in deliverance. And tonight, I'm going to let every person, every person, every person, I don't care who it is, we're going to let them go tonight. We're going to let them go. We're going to walk in the spirit, and we're not going to walk in the flesh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of God says what we the see, the what we sow, we're going to reap a harvest from it. And so if we sow unforgiveness, that means we're going to reap a harvest of it. And so that's why we're going to have to start walking in the spirit so we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We got to walk in the spirit. I made up my mind. I'm going to pray more in the Holy Ghost than I'm going to concentrate on what somebody has done to me. I'm going to love in spite of. I'm going to love. I, I got to the place where I looked at Pastor James, and I would say, I'm going to love you in spite of yourself. And I meant that from the bottom of my heart. I was doing it at first by faith. But as time went on, I began to love the man no matter what he done to me. I still love him no matter what. Why? Because God said, do not walk in unforgiveness. So I'm not going to walk in unforgiveness against him. I'm not going to do it. Somebody need to focus that in their mind right now. I'm talking about deliverance tonight, people. You're going to have to make up your mind. You are not going to walk in unforgiveness. You're going to let everybody, 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 even if they just did it this evening, you're going to let them go. And so I saw a picture in my mind. I saw this picture about walking in forgiveness. In other words, if somebody offend me in the morning, as soon as I can get in the presence of God, I need to let them go. Father, I let them go. I will let them go by faith. Why? Because by noon, somebody else may be done offended me. So at noon, I'm going to forgive that person also. By 3 o'clock, somebody else may offend me. I'm going to let them go. So by 6 o'clock, somebody else may be done offended me. And so I'm going to have to seek God <laughs> to let them go. So by the time it's time to go to bed at night, I don't have to pray about unforgiveness. Why? Because I've already released everybody that have offended me for that day. Wow. Ain't that good? That way I don't have to go to bed with unforgiveness in my heart. A lot of times we can't sleep at night because I, I, I was a, a prime example of it. I would lay there and I would try to come up with a way of getting somebody. I wanted to get them back. Everybody that done something to me, I was going to get you back. And so I would lay there at night and it would roll over in my mind, roll over in my mind. And how can I get them back without killing them and going to jail? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, you can stuff them in a mattress anywhere, however I can do it, you know, just know not to have to go to jail for it. But I turned my life completely over to God. I, I got tired of being doing it my way, and I wanted to have the results that God wanted me to have. And so when nighttime come, my family laughs at me. Because I go to bed, so, so I go to sleep so fast. Just like that, I go to sleep. Why? Because I don't have nobody on my heart. I'm not trying to lay there and think about how I can fix this and how I can hurt them. I don't do that no more. Because I've learned how, no matter what you do to me, I'm going to let you go. My children, sometimes they wonder how 
You love people when you know they don't talk about you. You know they done done ugly stuff to you, but you still love them. Why? Because I let them go. We got to let them go. We got to let them go. I can't hold them in bondage. I, can't, I got to pardon them so they can go where God want to take them. Come on, y'all. And so I was reading this today. It says that we can either sow to the flesh or we can sow to the spirit. And anytime we are walking around with unforgiveness in our lives, we are sowing to the flesh. And so we need to make that make up our mind tonight that, you know, I want to go where God want to go, take me, and I want to go in the realm of the spirit. I want to go to the spirit realm because in the spirit realm, there is so much more excitement than it is in the natural realm. Because if you notice, the natural realm is falling apart right now. I was sharing this with somebody today at the hospital, and I was telling her, I was just sitting there talking to her, and I was just telling her, I said, you know, I really feel sorry for somebody that don't know about the Spirit of God today. I said, because look at what's in the newspaper. I said, look what's on your computer. I said, everything about the news is just depressing. I said, you need to be able to run into the spirit realm and get a little peace and come on back out. But if you don't know how to go into the presence of God, you're going to be left over there, uh, tormented in your mind, because you don't know how to get with God. And so that's what God is trying to teach us now, is how to come out of the natural realm and go into the spirit realm so we can have our mind. Because the devil want our mind. He want everything about us. We have to fight for our mind. We have to fight for our bodies. Everything about us, the devil want to cut it down, shut it down. And so that's why it's so important that you pray over your body. That's why it's so important that you walk around, you know, and pray in the Holy Ghost. And I mean pray in the Holy Ghost. You've got to pray in the Holy Ghost, and you've got to pray all the time. You know, the enemy was trying to attack my body with rheumatoid or arthritis or whatever it was. But anyway, I would pull my legs up and I would speak to the devil and I would tell the devil, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And no arthritis is going to be in my body, not in my limbs at all. And the more I speak to my body, the more loose my body is. And it's not because I'm taking medication. It's because I'm medicating it with the word of God. And so that's why we got to take our body into the realm of the spirit. Even though this outward man is perishing, my inner man is being renewed day by day. And the more I renew the inward man, my outward man is behaving itself. Glory to God. And it has to be the same thing with unforgiveness. You got to take unforgiveness into the throne room. I'm going in with unforgiveness. But when I come back out, I'm coming out free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to allow people to hold me no longer. People will hold you in bondage. They will hold you in captivity. You know, you can't do what God tell you to do because you're afraid of people. You know, you can't, you can't do this because I'm afraid. I can't do this because I'm afraid. But God said, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So you can let that person go. You can let, and don't be afraid of them hurting you again. If they hurt you again, forgive them again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because there is no guarantee that people are not going to hurt you. I can say I believe that pastor is not going to hurt me, but I don't know whether pastor is going to hurt me again. I know pastor is going to do something I don't like again. I know that for a fact. But I've already focused in my mind, no matter what pastor do, I'm going to forgive him. you got to focus in your mind right now. Minister David, no matter what Dana do, you're going to forgive him. You're not going to walk in unforgiveness with her. Even though she may be looking in your face and telling you who she is and tricking her neck. You still going to forgive her. Woman, I'm going to forgive you and I'm going to let you go. I'm going to turn you over to the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's the way we got to get to the place where we just don't hold on to people and quit trying to make people who you want them to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's nothing like being free. It's nothing like being who God wants you to be. It's, it's, it's torment when you're trying to be somebody God never called you to be. 
It's just torment, trying to be somebody else. Look the way somebody wants you to look and, and smile the way somebody wants you to smile. It's torment. And so you're sitting there thinking, am I smiling like they want me to smile? Am I doing this the way they want me to do it? Am I walking the way they want me to walk? No, no, no. Pastor tried to change me. I tried to change him. I wanted him to be a more, more outward, and he wanted me to be more inward. you just loud. You're just country. You can take the, you can take a person out the country, but you can't take the country out of them. He would tell me that all the time. You're just loud. But that's just me. I'm loud. I'm loud. My mouth is loud. And so we stayed in it all the time. He tried to calm me down, and I'm trying to pull him up. Come on, you need to laugh more. You need to, you know, just get out of the box. I'm, I'm trying to make him get out of the box. Just do something different sometimes. Sometimes I just walk through the house and holler. Uh, I walk through the house and just start dancing. I just do anything, just anything. That's just me. But I had to realize that's not him. I'm trying to make him like me. And the more I made, try to make him like the worst he seen he got. Because he was rebelling against me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have any emotions? I would ask him, you got any emotions? <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. <coughs> and so we got to let people, we got to love people. It does, a lot of times we get in unforgiveness with people because we thought people should have done something. And they didn't do what we thought they were supposed to be. So now I can't stand you because you didn't do what I thought you were supposed to do. My God. My God. That person didn't even know they were supposed to do what you thought. And so you got unforgiveness in your heart against them. And one time thing I say all the time that they don't ever take for granted people know what you know. Don't ever think people know they looking at you to the point that they can read your mind and give you what you want. <laughs> You're going to be really disappointed. You're going to be really disappointed because this day and that time, people got so much on their mind until they ain't got time to sit around and just look at you and judge what you need and give it to you. Even if they come up with the idea of how, what you need, then they may not have time to give it to you. Glory to God. And then you're mad all over again. And so now, that's why we got to just be free. And then we got to let other people be free. We got to let them go. We got to let people go. It says, but if you live out of the flesh... You shall die. Now, anytime, anytime you stay in the flesh as a Christian, you're going to dry up and die. Have you ever seen a dead Christian? Y'all don't have to say nothing. Have you ever seen a dead Christian? they cold. There's no life in their life anymore. They've lived in the flesh. And one thing I want to encourage you all with, don't, in, uh, don't always expect somebody else to light your fire. Because if you expect somebody to light your fire all the time, you're going to be very disappointed. Because the very person you thought was going to light your fire, their own fire done went out. And that's why you can't depend on somebody to light your fire. You got to get to the place where you know how to light your own fire. And you got to learn how to get up and you have to pray. When you feel uh, any type of spirit that's trying to overtake you, you got to get up and you got to pray and you got to pray until you get a release. Don't, don't just sit and say, well, I'm going to wait till I get to church and then I'm going to get it. That could be the very day that it ain't there. And so then you're going to go back home and you're going to say, them people ain't got it. No, it's not about the people. It's about you need to press in to God. I got one hand clap. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to take y'all to another place. Because I'm telling you, uh, we can't go home with you. And there's going to be adversity at home. And if you don't know how to get into the presence of God and make a decision that you're going to do it, it's one thing to know how to get in the presence of God, but it's another thing to do it. So you've got to get to the place where even if whoever in the house with you don't do it, you got to make up your mind that you're going to do it. I, I, I don't, I, I couldn't, pastor would have quit, I'll put it this way. If he would have looked at my life and the unforgiveness that was in my life and said, well, I'm just going to quit being forgiven since you're so messed up. I could have caused him to stumble. 
because I was just that messed up. But because he didn't look at me, he kept his eyes on God. And he prayed for me, and God changed me. And so that's why it's important. Don't you look at somebody else. Don't you try to make them be what you think they ought to be. You pray and you ask God. God, the pastor had no idea what God was turning me into. He didn't have no idea, but he knew what he didn't like about me. He knew what he didn't like. So turn that person, forgive that person, learn how to forgive them, and turn them over to God. Do y'all hear me? See, because a lot of confusion in our house is because our children not doing what we want them to do. It's confusion. Our mate is not doing what we want them to do. It's confusion. And so we got to get to the place where we just go to the throne room of God and we give our family to God. And remember that what we sow, we're going to reap. And if we reap the spirit, we're going to sow spirit results. If we reap flesh results, we, we reap flesh, we're going to get flesh results. And so we make up our mind tonight. I want you to make up your mind tonight that you're not going to stay in the realm of the spirit. Meditate in the natural. Meditating on what somebody has done to you. But you're going to be instantly, you're going to run instantly into the throne room of God. And you're going to give that person to God no matter what they have done to you. If you're holding on to something that mama done to you when you were a little girl. And you, now you're a woman and you're still holding on to, mama didn't do this. Mama did this for my sister, but she didn't do it for me. You need to let mama go. You need to let mama go tonight. You don't hold on that, to that any longer. I tell ladies all the time, mama did the best she knew how to do. A lot of times, mama didn't know no better. She couldn't give you something that she didn't know. She gave you what she had. And so we got to learn that, and we got to forgive, and we got to let them go. Because if we don't learn how to forgive, with the same thing we done to our mothers done to us, we're going to turn around, and we're going to do the same thing to our children. And our children are going to grow up with unforgiveness in their heart concerning us. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was talking to someone on yesterday. And that's what I was telling them. I say, I can see what you're saying about uh, you have a reason to walk in unforgiveness. But the Bible say you don't have a reason. In the natural, you have a reason. But in the spirit, you don't have a reason. And I said, if you put that bitterness into your child, that child going to grow up and be just like you are right now. You go into the nursing home, and there is a lot of bitter old people in that nursing home. They're so bitter because they never release what somebody done to them. And so now here they are in the nursing home, drying up, dying, and nobody comes see them because they mean and they're hateful. That's because they didn't learn how to let go. I had an aunt, she was so mean. No, she, would, she was mean and low down. And so nobody, nobody wanted to go to her house. And we would go there, and we would, you know, I was in love. You know, I'm in love. I'm walking in love, walking. I would go there, and I would let us talk about my mama, my cousin, my everybody. And I was sitting there on the inside. I wanted to shoot her. But I was sitting. <laughs> I said, you my auntie, so I'm going to come and visit you. Won't nobody else come visit you, but I'm going to come and visit you. But she had gotten that way with everybody. She had ran everybody away from her. And that's because all her life she told what somebody else done to her. Somebody was always doing something to her. And so she was just bitter. She was just bitter. So when she got old, she was a bitter old woman. And so then she would tell us about how low down our mama was, how low down the cousin was, how low down the daddy was, how low down everybody. We'd sit there, and I would sit there, I would make my sister go with me, and we'd just sit there and listen about how low down. How low down our parents was. But I made up my mind she was that way for a reason. And you realize you do not want to be that way. You want to let everybody go that have hurt you. You want to make up your mind. If you sow to the spirit, you'll reap spirit things. But if you sow to the flesh, and let me tell you this right now. This is another scripture I want to read to you. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. 
and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would do. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. So you got to realize the flesh is not going to just let you walk in love. The devil is not going to just let you walk in love. But you're going to have to make up your mind that you're going to fight for the love walk. You're going to have to fight for the love walk. I need you to close your eyes right now. I need you to make up your mind right now. You're going to fight for the love walk. You're going to fight for the love walk. I'm going to walk in love because love is of the spirit. Love is of God. The love of God has been shared abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to walk in love. Father, I make up my mind. I need you to start talking to yourself. You can talk inward, outward, whatever you want to do. But I need you to talk out to yourself right now. I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to walk in love in spite of whatever anybody has done to me. No matter what people have said about me, I'm going to walk in love. I don't care if they said it five minutes ago, but I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to walk. I'm going to be a walk. I'm going to be a love vessel. I'm going to be fat and flourishing in the things of God. I'm going to be fat and flourishing in the things of God. I am going to be fat and flourishing in the things of God. I am not going to live a beat down life because I walk in the flesh. But Father God, I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight that I see in your word, Lord God. You say when I stand praying, if I have unforgiveness in my heart, all against any, I'm supposed to let them go. And Father God, I make up my mind right now. I let every person. Every person, come on, I need you to stand on your feet right now and just begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God right now.